offensive zone to our right. Bernard Hosu is the referee today. Abdul Kitanya and Jack Damro are the assistant referees today, and Jared Rigby works the table down below us here to our right. Work continues on the complex here, the construction of the new Cowgirls soccer complex. We'll talk about that a little bit at halftime. Ball touched by the Cowgirls they couldn't control, and so Baylor has a throw in across the way to the right of the halfway line. 2.15 into the match, just underway here. Baylor coming off a tie against OU on Friday. The Cowgirls won at TCU. Ball played by the Cowgirls as they win the ball defensively and send it forward. Pass Zoller, and it'll be played at midfield. Center of the ground by Henderson. Up the near side, Henderson trying to find Padgett. Padgett, cross, blocked. Goes off the back of the Cowgirl player, Hannah Webb. Now crossed again into the square, and a ball kicked just off to the right of the keeper and the near post by Baylor in the middle of the ground. It looked like Wenlatt was the player down there for them. Lima is their leading scorer with eight points, three goals, and two assists. The Cowgirls led by Haley Woodard with five goals and three assists and 13 points. Goal kick for the Cowgirls. This is taken by OSU. It bends by the sideline and goes out of bounds to our right below us here, and Leach will take it in for Oklahoma State or for Baylor. She'll send it again off a touch toward the center of the ground. Baylor tries to center, and the Cowgirls get a deep ball back to the center of the field, and it is taken there by the defender for Baylor. They'll send it down the ground. Again on the attack is Baylor. They play it to the midfield area, still in their own zone. The Cowgirls trying to clear it. Baylor has numbers past the halfway line. This is Leach who will play it into the center of the ground and bring it ahead, intercepted by Webb, and then a foul by Baylor, and the Cowgirls get a free kick in front of the Baylor bench to our right. Chuck Codd, Matt Smith, and Hannah Gilmore are the assistant coaches for Baylor. Justin Elkington, Karen Hancock, and Michael O'Hare are the assistants for Colin Carmichael. Low kick against the wind. Woodard will try to knock it down. Wearing a pink guard on her right hand, and the Cowgirls wearing those pink and white uniforms today. Here's a chance in front. Morgan, right of the keeper, blocked in the six and fallen on by the keeper inside the six-yard square. A nice attack coming by Morgan from the right side after the setup in front of the goal by the Cowgirls. Oh, missed opportunity there on the first chance, really, of the match in the first four and a half minutes by the Cowgirls past the halfway line. Dollar gets tripped up now, a foul to the right, or to the left, I should say, of the center circle. Cowgirls center it quickly down the ground looking for Morgan off the quick kick. Locked away by Baylor and then up the far sideline. The Cowgirls try to intercept and will do that as nobody's there for the Lady Bears. Now they'll bring it forward. Center of the ground looking to bring it ahead. Jones looks to try to center it across to Webb who's coming in from the back side. But it's intercepted over here by Padgett and brought back the other way. Cowgirls bring their defenders up and a nice touch by Rodriguez. Sliding tackle there to maybe keep the ball and they do and they overrun it and Webb will have it for the Cowgirls. Bring it down in front. She gets pushed off, pushed again, back line, and it'll slide off of Webb for a goal kick for Baylor. And I think the Lady Bears might have caught a break right there as there may have been a foul that wasn't called. These two teams definitely have a history of tight contests, especially here in Stillwater. Their goalkeeper, by the way, Jennifer Wand. Kicking the ball here, a freshman out of Brookfield, Wisconsin. And then as the ball is played forward, a foul on the Cowgirls. This will be a free kick for Baylor. Watt is out of Brookfield, Wisconsin. And Mikhail Angaro, who's in goal for the Cowgirls, is from Heartland, Wisconsin. So you have a couple of uplanders in this one today. Foul was before the halfway line, and so the kick here by the Lady Bears. Strong and toward the six-yard square. Big, giant header by the Cowgirls. Another one to play it out of the 18 square there by Linhart. Now the ball sent back in for Baylor. That's going to go across the back line into the netting behind the north uh, end zone here, as it were, and so a goal kick for Oklahoma State. Wend in 750-plus minutes, four goals allowed, 22 saves, a .48 goals against average. Angaro, 822 minutes, eight goals allowed, a .88 goals against average, and 28 saves. Two very good keepers today as well. Lennart knocks that ball out of range, down the ground, and it'll be taken by Baylor for a throw-in. We played seven minutes. There is no score. The Lima is their top 
keeper, or top uh, goal scorer, I should say, as this ball rolls to the keeper. Off the inbounds play, and free kick here for Ongaro. She'll punt it away. Again, four tickets for $15. Use the promo code at okstate.com, and come on out and watch the Cowgirls. We're only early into this one. Cowgirls send it forward, looking for Woodard coming down the right side, trying to get around her defender, and a foul. This will be called on Oklahoma State. So a free kick for Baylor just outside their own 18-yard line. Again, Baylor in green going left to right. Cowgirls in white with the pink numbers in today on the uniforms going from our right to left. Wand will take the free kick here for Baylor. Baylor 7-2-2 two two overall, 1-1-1 one, one and one in the league. Three overtime games in a row in the league for them. They're 1-1-1. One, one one. Ball played off the near side. Webb will send it forward. Intercepted there by Schwartz. They'll bring it back the other way or try to anyway. Dollar intercepted there for a moment, but then it's sent the other way by Schwartz. Touched by Baylor along the near side, Wenland. And they'll play it forward to the near side for Henderson. And down the ground, the Cowgirls look to intercept as Rodriguez will just send it to the sideline. So a throw in here for Baylor. In front of their own bench to our right, Allie Henderson will take the throw in. Freshman out of Wichita, Kansas, out of Trinity Academy. So she'll have some fans here today. And as I said all that about her, they're going to change it, and Ariel Leach will throw it in. Leach on the near wing, a little touch, gets it back, tries for the centering inside the 18, a collision, ball to the ground, still alive, no foul. Now at the top of the 18, a blast right on Oncaro, and it hits her in the head, and she's able to block it in front of her and knock it down. That blast in front by Julie James, the junior out of Fairview, Texas. And a good look straight on there for, for the Lady Bears. Now the Cowgirls send it forward, but again, Baylor's able to turn it, and here they come the other way. Lima across the top of the 18, played off the ball, but we get a foul there by the Cowgirls, and this will give Baylor a chance at the 20-yard line. Referee Bernard Hosu marks the ball for play. It'll be just outside that little crescent moon, which is basically the 20-yard line at the top of the 18 square. So a five-man wall for the Cowgirls. Baylor has to be careful of offsides here. They'll see if they can bend this in. Who's going to take this kick? Wendland looks like she's going to take it. Here's the blast, and it is over the top. And it'll be a goal kick for Oklahoma State. Right idea there by Cameron Wendland. Wendland has one goal on the season and an assist. You get two points for a goal and one point for an assist in collegiate soccer. So another chance here at the 10-minute mark and no score. And ahead for the Cowgirls up the ground. They're looking to play it. But it'll be sent back to the keeper by the defender, and so they play off the ball and come back defensively. Up the near sideline, it comes to Leach. He'll send it along the near sideline. Up the ground, trying to win it is Hannah Webb. It does a, basically a tumble, and it ends up coming back up to the ball and gets fouled. That was a great play by the freshman there, Hannah Webb, out of Mansfield, Texas, to win the ball and then draw the foul. The Cowgirls will get the free kick here just to the right of the halfway line at the scorer's table. Rodriguez will take the ball against the wind, high, trying to send it into Haley, a header though out by Baylor, and it'll be a throw in for Oklahoma State. The wind picks back up here again. The Cowgirls working against the wind here in the first half. As we played 11 minutes, there is no score. Webb will do the throw in. Woodard on this near wing, near the sideline, trying to get it back to Webb. It's intercepted there by Padgett. Open ground here in front of us. Rodriguez trying to win it. They try to dig it out. There's no call and no foul, says the official. Play on, and now Baylor will touch it along the near sideline, and a cowgirl throw in. So a chance here at the offensive end. Woodard back to Zoller, who comes in from the backside along the near wing. And one-on-one -on -one here at the... Far corner, near corner rather, and the ball is kicked out by Baylor. This will be a throw in. Won't have the impact of a corner kick, but it comes from almost the same spot. Webb throws it in. Near sideline, Woodard. 
two on one against her. She can break free. Well, does. Gets it to Webb. Looks for the cross inside the six, but it comes right to the keeper. And she'll clear it out to the far wing. And Baylor's on the run, going left to right back the other way. Down the far sideline, Kennedy Brown. Brown was a factor in the game the other night. Nearly had a goal against OU. Baylor did everything in that game Friday night, but win it down in Norman. They tied in overtime. Balls played forward. Zoller off her foot. Too strong for Woodard to try to come in from the back side as the Cowgirls regain the possession. And it goes back to the Baylor keeper. Cowgirls will have two big games next weekend on the road. In fact, the next three are on the road. Next week at West Virginia and Iowa State, and then two weeks from now at Texas Tech. Then back home against K-State in Kansas in three weeks. Then at Texas, and then it's time for the Big 12 tournament. Cowgirls win it center of the ground and bring it back the other way. This is Elise Hahn for the Cowgirls. Play it back to the far wing, and that is touched over there by Morgan, and then it goes off of a Baylor player, and this will be a throw-in for Oklahoma State. 13 minutes in, no score. Each team have had opportunities. Baylor's had probably two or three more than the Cowgirls have had. Sideline official over there, Jack Danrell, helping the referee set the ball for play. And the wall won by the Cowgirls, sent forward into the square, but it's blocked right in front by Schwartz. They had two players headed for goal if the ball had cleared. It did not. It sent back the other way to Winland. She runs it up the near side. It's touched there by Delema, who sends it into the forward end. Rodriguez, though, does a good job of cutting off the angle and intercepts the ball. Now to Webb, gets it back to Zoller. Taken off the ball to the sideline. Baylor keeps it in bounds, but now it goes out, and this will be a Cowgirl throw-in. 14 in, and the score zero zero. 0-0. You hear the Orange Power chant in the background. Nice crowd here this afternoon. Still time for you to come on out. Baylor plays off Zoller's kick and sends the ball all the way down to the far end. This will roll across the back line, and a goal kick coming up for Oklahoma State. Cowgirls have outscored their opponents this year 32 to 9. And we mention that because Baylor has only scored 16 goals to their opponents' five. That's all they've allowed this year. At their record because of the overtimes and the two ties, not as good as the Cowgirls. Left footed kick by Rodriguez out of the goal square will be taken by the Cowgirls and brought up the near side. Their losses, by the way, at Washington. And the uh, loss against West Virginia in overtime a week ago Friday in Waco. Actually, actually, uh, yeah, that was in Waco. Ball off of Zoller near sideline. Deep throw in for Baylor right below us here. As we sit high above here on the east side with all the folks this year as we await the completion of the construction of the new soccer complex next door across the uh, field from us. Enter by Baylor out of bounds. Cowgirl throw in. Under 30 to play now in the first half. Ball deep for Woodard. Trying to play off two men. Does. Out in open ground now. Looks to try to bring it to Zoller. She'll send it back to Lenard who plays it ahead. Now up front is Woodard. Trying to break around one man. Does. And then her pass intercepted. But gets the ball back on a touch. Now a chance out in front. Lenard shoots. And it's just wide of the near post. She came in from the back side. And had a chance at about the 25-yard line. So that's two now for Oklahoma State. They've had nearly straight on to the goal. I said Leonard. That was actually uh, J.C. Jones who was on the blast. So a goal kick for Baylor. They'll send it away with the strong kick with the wind into the center circle, headed down by the Cowgirls, but won by Delema, and they'll play it forward. In the front of the box there is James. Looks to pass forward. The ball is blocked. Now a little short touch. That's trouble. And a shot coming in from the left side is blocked across the back line by Angaro. This should be a corner for Baylor. That was Wenland again, I believe, coming in from the back side. And we have an injured cowgirl down. This is Kumba So, who is down for Oklahoma State. This was away from the play, by the way. And the training staff now have to take a look at Kumba as the clock has stopped. And 
We're inside 28 minutes to play here in the first half. Goomba's up and all right. And we'll come off the ground at least for a moment. They'll check her out, make sure she's okay. Cowgirls will play a man down for a moment. And then she's likely going to come right back into the match. So the Cowgirls will go ahead and sub. And this will be Rachel Van Fossen who will check in. Junior out of Broken Arrow. Played at Tulsa Union. Played at Arkansas before transferring here two years ago. Coming in for so is Van Fossen. Now a play off the corner, blocked in front of the square, and the Cowgirls clear it all the way back to the halfway line. So a chance here, and it went awry for Baylor. That ball sent by the keeper all the way down to the 18. A couple of headers. Baylor will try to knock it down. Winland for a moment had it. Now the Cowgirls will take it, and they have numbers bring it up. This is Rodriguez trying to find Haley Woodard. Woodard in front finds Jones, now blasted in front to Woodard, but it's too strong for her, and the keeper able to pick it up inside the 18. So they'll start over again, and Baylor on the move again, going left to right into the forward end. Baylor far side wing, sending it into the forward end. This ball with the wind will just carry across the back line again for a Cowgirl goal kick coming up. Minor special promotions for the remaining games as we're going to have another sub here. Go to okstate.com for games against Kansas State on the 20th and the 22nd against Kansas, which will be senior day. These pink jerseys, by the way, they'll be auctioning those off at the next game. Here is Lauren Piercy in the game, a junior from Amarillo Randall High School in Texas coming in for Baylor. Kick taken by the Cowgirls, sent forward. Halfway line, a header, knocked down by Baylor, but taken over on the wing, and here comes... Morgan up the far sideline. Plays it back to Hahn at the halfway line with 27 minutes left in the first half. Hahn back to Linhart. And an intercept, and the ball is knocked away and a foul here as it looks like the Lima who came in was taken off the ball. That rolled across the back line, but the foul counts first. And so uh, I think they showed card on that too, by the way against Oklahoma State. So this will be a free kick for Baylor at about the 30-yard line, almost straight on to Michaela Angaro. Looks like Elaine DeLima will take this. She is the midfielder, the senior out of Brazil. And a four-year starter for Coach Jobson. Five-man wall for the Cowgirls. Kick right to Angaro, who falls to her knees and makes the save. Straight on to the keeper, and the Cowgirls get a free kick punt out of this at 26-44 left in the first half. On a play like that, the keeper has to take the punt. They've been using some other players, defenders, to send the ball forward against this wind to save Ungaro's legs. Played ahead trying to find Marlo Zoller, but it's taken by Baylor as they have defenders over here along the near sideline. Baylor out here in front of us on a touch by Padgett. And so the ball belongs to the Cowgirls. Webb on a throw in. Has it back. Zoller off a touch from Haley Woodard in front trying to find Jones. The ball's knocked down by Baylor. They try to dig it out and turn it, and they do, and here they come the other way. Great team speed for the Lady Bears. This is Delima by herself across the line. Now sends it forward on the wing near side. And uh, coming in across here. By Piercy, a chance in front, knocked away by the Cowgirls. By Tressfield, now knocked down by Baylor. And played back by James, who will get it back now from the defender who is playing up. Now across in front, that's up in the air by Oklahoma State off a kick. Knocked down by Baylor, a chance, and that will be taken by Angaro off the left-footed boot on the far side of the ground. That was Brown over there, I believe, who took that play. So another punt for Ungaro against the wind. That angles to the near side. Header here by James. We'll send it into the Cowgirl defensive end. Knocked down by Henderson. She'll keep the play going here as the Lady Bears pull their defenders all well to the halfway line. Everybody else is forward. Cowgirls intercept, take it back. And Zoller now plays it off and now collision. 
trying to win the ball. Cowgirls were able to keep it as Lenhart left her feet. Now leaves her feet again as she got tangled up. Now a chance here in front. Here's Piercy bringing it down off a play by DeLima. And the Cowgirls play him off the ball for the moment. And we'll start over again here. Padgett on the wing. Looks for the cross. It's blocked out. Now tries to take the touch again. Baylor has to reset. Sends it into the 18 square. But that ball is going to go across the back line for a goal kick. 24-30 left in the first half. Oklahoma State has been outshot here in the first half, but have had a couple of good opportunities for the first goal of the match. We are at 0-0 here in Stillwater. Baylor has played three straight overtime games in conference play and has played a total of five overtime games on the year. Cowgirls have been sent to OT twice with two ties to show for it. Played off the ball, and Baylor trying to win it in the offensive end. Stays there, and that's where the Cowgirls get a touch and send it ahead across the line to Woodard. Now she'll get some help and bring it up midfield. This is Jones. Had a shot opportunity earlier. Rodriguez will play it down to Zoller. Marlowe in open ground, turns it, sends it ahead for Woodard. She's inside the 18, coming in left side, and she's offsides. So the Cowgirls called for offsides. This will be a free kick for Baylor at the spot of the violation. Nobody on that far side of the ground for OSU, and so Baylor will send it over there and play it left to right into the forward end. We approach the halfway point of the first half. Played over here on the near side, far side rather by Henderson. Cowgirls try to bring it ahead, but then a foul. And it will belong to Baylor on a free kick. Foul is on Oklahoma State. So as we drop under 23 left in the first half, we'll take a look at all the other games from the weekend and what's being played today. There are three games today in the league and the national rankings and other things coming up at halftime. Header by Baylor off the deep ball, sent across the ground, running it down maybe to the near side. Can they catch up to it? Yes, Baylor will keep it. Leach with a cross in front, trying to dig it out of that area there is James. And... A foul here as James pushed off on Oklahoma State's defender. That was inside the 18. And so the free kick here for OSU. Tried to take Loren Tressfield off the play. Unsuccessful. And the Cowgirls wearing the pink looking uh, numbers and letters on the uniforms today. Free kick just bends to the near sideline and out of bounds. A Baylor throw in. Each team getting ready to sub in here. And for Oklahoma State, here is Anna Beffer in the match for the first time. Beffer's had that leg injury. And she comes in for the first time, the defender out of, or the uh, senior midfielder, I should say, out of Tulsa Union. Also in the match for Baylor is Haley Sawinski. She's a sophomore out of Allen, Texas. She wears number 44. She comes in on the wing near side. Double team, the Cowgirls able to knock it out of bounds, Van Fossen. So a deep throw in along the near sideline as we are below the halfway point of the first half here. As we have a scoreless game here in Stillwater, Cowgirls and Baylor. Cowgirls trying to break a losing streak that goes back to 2014 in this series. We'll cross in front there, goes across the back line, down by the back line, and this will be a goal kick for Oklahoma State. And this will be Rodriguez, who again will take this goal kick against this 20-mile-an-hour win. Line drive to the edge of the halfway circle. And a foul here on Baylor. This is called on Henderson. So a free kick from the edge of the circle, right of the line. And we get another whistle, and we get another foul and another Free play here for Oklahoma State. Another free kick. They call both these on DeLima. Strong kick into the 18. That bounces over a defender, and the keeper just comes out and grabs it with two hands at about the 15-yard line. That was a strong kick to the other end of the ground by OSU against the wind, which dies and then blows back up again and never really goes away, but... It gusts at times. Nice hitter by the Cowgirls trying to win it and a whistle away from the ball, and it's a foul on Baylor. 
OSU is going to get a free kick out of this to the left of the halfway line with under 20 minutes now to play in the first half. Still no score. Let's see what they can do here on this possession. Lenart brings it into the area of the top of the 18. Defenders there for Baylor, though, as they dig it out. Cowgirls intercept. It's brought into the forward end. Tripped up in front of the square at about the 25-yard line is Jones, and we get a foul on Baylor. They'll spot the ball for play there. A little bit of an angle to the left, not straight on, but pretty close. Baylor will set up a four-man line, probably about the 18, maybe inside the square a little bit, about a yard or two. And here comes the kick. This is Lenard. It'll pop into the square. It'll clear everybody and come toward the back line. Baylor will just kick it to the sideline over here. And out of bounds for a cowgirl throw-in. If you've been watching on the uh, internet feed here, you see the strategy. Play Haley Woodard off the ball. Keep her off the ball. Cowgirl's double touch off the throw-in. This is Webb. Left of the square. Looks to try to center it. Now up front, there's a chance maybe if they can run it down for Morgan. Back side of the square. Right side goes across the line, and that'll be a goal kick for Baylor. I think they had the right idea there. They just couldn't get squared up as they ran out of real estate. So a goal kick coming up here for Jennifer Wand. It's a younger team for Baylor this year. They have quite a few experienced players, but freshman goalkeeper and some others, so they have a, a rebuilding situation this year, but they won't have to rebuild for long, that's for sure. They're usually around it every year. Here's Sawinski trying to play it ahead. Cowgirls have to clear it out of their own zone and kick a high ball against the wind to the halfway line that the Cowgirls were able to actually knock down for a moment. Good play by Jones, and she gets it back from Haley, and it's in the area right of the line now. We brought up by OSU. This is Played off the ball, Lenhart, but then the defender over there, Hahn, gets it back. She's wearing that orange headband. Gets it through traffic. Morgan has it for a moment. Now defender 1v1, and Baylor's able to clear it. Maybe if Webb can run it down, they won't get it back, and they don't. The Cowgirls are going to turn it. Here's Hannah Beffer. Plays it forward for Woodard, a two-on-one, and a header plays it out of the top of the 18, and Baylor will turn it. They have numbers as they come back the other way. Henderson up the far side. Now looks for a centering pass, but it's intercepted by OSU. Cowgirls will play it back the other way. This is Rodriguez back on a 1v1 here, brings it across the line. Looks to play it forward, too strong for Beffer. And a back at playing strength here, and good to see that after she was out for several games. Still one of the top assist people in the country, despite having not played for a while. Cowgirls intercept, turn it, bring it back the other way. They have five coming down. This is Woodard off the pass, left of the square, 1v1 over here on this near side. Play it off to Beffer outside the square. Beffer looks to dribble, brings it across, gets bumped, knocked down, back line, no call, and now we get a foul. This is outside the box, so no penalty kick here, but it will be a free kick for the Cowgirls, basically an inbounds corner from the left side. Webb will set this up at about the six-yard line to the right of the keeper, Jennifer Wand. With 16 minutes left in the half, low line drive in the square. Woodard trying to get the touch, I believe, coming in, or Morgan won, and the ball out by Baylor back to the sideline. This will be a throw-in. And quickly the Cowgirls play it back inbounds. Beffer splits two defenders, plays it off to Webb, near side. Webb looks for the centering inside the six. Look for the header, punched out by the keeper. Now a high kick sends it away by Baylor, back up the ground to the far side, and they'll play it all the way back down the ground where they have a man deep. This is Piercy trying to beat two defenders. They play her off of the box and off the ball, and a good defensive play there by Hahn, and now across the back line. And did Baylor touch this last? Cowgirls seem to think this is going to be a corner for them, and we're going to have subs here for both teams as Kumba So checks back in for OSU. And Marissa Kinsey checks in, a sophomore from Allen, Texas. And Emily Brunell checks in, a midfielder, also a freshman out of Cottage Grove, Minnesota. The 
will be a corner for Baylor. Deep left side. Piercy, I believe, taking the corner here. This is to the right of Ungaro. Strong kick into the 18. A header by Baylor toward the square. Headed out by the Cowgirls. Now headed back in by the Lady Bears. Couple of touches here. Cowgirls can't clear. Baylor with a kick. Comes toward the near post, and Ungaro just lets it go out. Then it'll hang up in the fence, and this will be a goal kick for the Cowgirls. Cowgirls will sub in here as well as Cammy Huddleston, the freshman out of Alito, Texas, will come into the match. A lot of these girls, Texas girls in particular, all know each other because they either play against or with each other in club soccer or in high school ball or both. Off the goal kick, the Cowgirls play it ahead. 14 minutes left in the first half, still no score. Cowgirls have been more of the aggressor lately, but Baylor's had opportunities. Woodard can't run the ball down in front of us here, and it's taken by Schwartz, and she'll play it back the other way. Left to right to the forward end. Piercy played off the ball, and a good play by Webb. And now the Cowgirls look to turn it. This is so back in after a collision earlier, and she had to leave the game for about 20 minutes, but she's back. They'll play it across the line with Lennart. Now with So. Along the near wing, this is Beffer. Beffer 1v1 coming in from the left side. Beats her man for a moment. Now looks for the cross. Chance in front. Rebounded off Baylor. And they can't play it. Now Woodard gets it back to Beffer. Tries to work around her man near the edge of the 18 near side. Plays it off out front. Chance there for Webb. Sends it into the square. Now Woodard, but she's got her back to the ball, to the square. Can't get it. Now So played off the ball as it left the square. A collision, no foul, and play on, says the official, as Baylor sends it back the other way. Now girls had a couple of opportunities there, but, again, not really on the second one a good angle, and then they got played off the ball anyway, and then Haley had her back to the, square, to the uh, goal. The Cowgirls quickly back the other way. Have it in front. Here's a chance for Beffer. It'll go over the crossbar and a goal kick for Baylor. Might as well start taking some opportunities out front. And they did that there with 12.45 to go in the half. This will be a goal kick for Baylor as they'll kick it left to right with the win. The Cowgirls will have that win at their back coming up after halftime. Baylor's played the most overtime games of any team in the league. They've played three in a row. So you got to think they're maybe a little tired. Cowgirls played Friday night at TCU, but got home and got to rest up before the game today. Baylor, of course, on the road, coming up here yesterday from Norman. Trying to clear it. Cowgirls can't get it out of their own zone. Baylor has it back. They bring it into the offensive end. Henderson, touch in front, knocked away by OSU. Header at the top of the uh, circle there by James. But it's down to the Cowgirls, and this is Cammy Henderson, who will play it ahead for Oklahoma State. Huddleston, I should say. Cammy has had a good freshman season to start her Cowgirl career. Webb across the line on a dribble, and she's fouled right in front of us here. Up and okay, and she'll have a free kick with 11.30 to go before halftime. Baylor player is down right here below us, and we didn't see that until just now. So they will check her out right along the sideline here, and the clock will stop with 11.35 left in the half. Reminder, only two more home games for Oklahoma State. K-State at a 3 o'clock start on the 20th, and then that's on a Friday, and then Kansas here for a 1 o'clock game on the 22nd. This is a significant enough injury that we have a timeout in which the referee allows both teams to come to the sideline here. So the Cowgirls have had opportunities in this first half. Baylor started off the aggressor. They probably had four or five chances before the Cowgirls got one in this match. But that has evened itself out a little bit now, and so that's where we are. Cowgirls started the week at number 70, by the way, in the RPI. Baylor was number 48. Cowgirls were ranked 19th. Baylor was receiving votes in the poll but did not get ranked this week in the top 25. Texas number eight, West Virginia number nine. In the RPI, Texas started the week at number five. Texas won the other night in double overtime against Tech 3-2 in uh, Austin. So they're 3-0 and 11-0 on the year. West Virginia number eight, Baylor 48 in the RPI. Kansas 65, the Cowgirls 70. Tech 72 and TCU number 74. 
Injured player for Baylor, whose number I do not see, is sitting up now right here below us. So play will resume momentarily here. This appears to be Julie James, who's sitting here waiting to be helped to her feet if she can get up. And we're kind of blocked out here by the player, so we really can't tell. She took a tumble here on this play along the near sideline a moment ago. So both teams basically getting a free timeout here with 11.35 left in the half. And she is being helped to her feet. This is Ariel Leach, double zero, is being helped to her feet. And she gets a hand from this crowd here at the Cowgirls Soccer Complex. Play is the other way, and so we'll play it to our left here. And a free ball by OSU. Baylor controls it and sends it back the other way. Cowgirls with Han, a 1v1. It's won by Baylor for the moment. And the pinball's around over there on that far side near the halfway line. Cowgirls trying to clear it out of their own zone. And they win the ball possession back. 11-10 left in the half. Still no score here in Stillwater. Cowgirls play it forward to Wooder to header, but nobody coming in from the back side. Baylor clears it to the halfway line. That'll go into the table and a throw in for the Cowgirls. Webb along the near side to Beffer, and that ball goes off OSU. No, it goes off Baylor, and a Cowgirl throw in. The first subs here for Oklahoma State. As Taylor Olson, the freshman, checks in. And Claire Ganser also checks into the match. Ganser the sophomore out of Plano. Olson, the freshman out of San Antonio, Reagan. Off the throw in, a header here by Baylor and a Cowgirl throw in. With 10.28 left in the half, deep in their offensive zone to our left. Ganser will get it in and get it right back. Touch over here by Beffer. Now Ganser off the ball. Nice defense there by Henderson. And they'll play it back to the area where James was standing. She'll send it over across the way, and Schwartz will send it across the line, or try to anyway. They can keep the possession. Baylor going left to right in the green uniforms. Had a player looking like she had going to tie a shoe, and the ball came to her, and the Cowgirls intercepted. Well, catch a break here. Why don't they? Let's see if they can. Baylor tries to intercept. They do and send it back down the ground. And... They'll have a 1v1 down there with their forward, Piercy, who's as fast as anybody on this team, and she ends up winning the ball along the sideline. Piercy looking for a centering pass to the top of the 18. Cowgirls intercept and play it defensively back the other way, or try to anyway. They get it back to about the halfway line, and here comes Baylor down the center of the ground. This is James bringing it across. She'll kick it to the left of the far post. This will be a goal kick for Oklahoma State with 9-18 left in the first half. By the time the clock stops is for officials timeouts, injuries, yellow or red cards, or a score. Cowgirls will kick a low line drive as the wind has died down a hair here to the center circle. Baylor will just clear it before anybody can get to it, a.k.a. Taylor Olson. Back to the keeper, and she'll send it ahead with the wind to the other side of the ground. Knocked down there by Lenhart. Played back to Hahn over on the far wing. Webb now playing on the far side of the ground as they flip the defenders here with Ganser in the match. Played out of bounds, and Baylor will have a throw in as we go under 8.30 left in the half. Goes off of a, well, it does not. It hadn't inbounded it yet. We'll throw in here for... Baylor, far sideline, just to the right of the halfway line. They'll play it ahead. Trying to send it down the ground. Into the corner. And the ball rolls. No, it's a foul. Whistle by the official. Free kick here for Oklahoma State, a push by Baylor. So almost to the back line, back corner. On the northwest side of the ground here, across from us. Cowgirls take a low line drive kick, which is headed out by Bunnell at the halfway line. And played in by Baylor for the moment. Cowgirls looking to clear, but it's run down again by Schwartz over here on the far wing. And Baylor will win it back at the halfway line with 7.38 to go in the half. The scoreless game here in Stillwater. Baylor has only scored 16 goals, but has only given up five this year. And now a foul by the Bears. 
And to the right of the halfway line, OSU will have a free kick. Still in their own defensive end to our right here, their own zone. They'll play it out of there with Rodriguez on the dribble. Trying to send it to Ganser. Splits two defenders. She touches it once, twice. Tries to play it and center it. Cowgirls try to run it down. Baylor has numbers. Play it back toward the halfway line. And now the Bears will clear it into their uh, Cowgirls zone here to our right. This ball will bounce all the way with the wind down to Ongaro on about four hops. So she'll just roll it and take it back to the near side. And this is where Rodriguez will bring it forward with 6.40 left in the half. Still no score here in Stillwater. Well, it would be nice to get one before halftime if you're either team. Ball played to the defender on the near wing for Baylor. Played off the ball for a moment. Now James taken in far side now by Baylor at the defensive end to our left. They're trying to go left to right. Looking to get set against the Cowgirls spread here defending at the midfield area with 6.15 to go. Cowgirls knock the ball down again as it crosses the line. 1v1 over there, so, and taken off the ball. This will be a foul on Kumba. Call for the push. So free kick here for Baylor as we drop under six to play in the half. This kick will be across the way from us about 12 yards past the halfway line. With the wind, a strong kick, top of the 18. Big header by the Cowgirls to send it out of that area. Baylor knocks it down, plays it forward. Schwartz brings it on the right wing. Looking to come in backside to Sawinski, but the ball's going to go out. This will be a goal kick for Oklahoma State. Baylor will sub again here. Sarah Bevington, midfielder, a freshman out of Arveda, Colorado, out of the Denver area, checks in for the Lady Bears. She'll replace Pierce, who's had a good game off the bench here in the first half. Five minutes left before halftime, no score. Baylor knocks it down from the goal kick. Now the Cowgirls will just send it back the other way. Olsen trying to head it, taken off the ball, but it's played on the near wing by Beffer, who then it gets taken off the ball by Baylor. Ball will go out of bounds off the Lady Bears in front of the scorer's table. Cowgirls with a throw in. Answer gets it to Olsen. Can't control it. Baylor will send it back the other way, but the Cowgirls have numbers at the halfway line, for a moment anyway. Now it's played ahead here by Bunnell. She'll send it all the way down the ground. Let's see if Bevington can catch up to it. No, and it's a goal kick again for Oklahoma State. With 4.20 left in the half. Baylor the aggressor early. The Cowgirls started to answer after that, and each team has exchanged opportunities in the last 30 minutes of this match. Four minutes left before halftime. Off the kick, Cowgirls a header, knock it down at the center line. And Beffer will win it over here for a moment, at least on the near side. Boy, sends it between the legs of a Baylor player, had a chance up here in front. Cowgirls have a player down. Baylor touched it a throw in. Cowgirls still playing a man down, and now the official sees the injured player right here below us to our left. This is trying to gather herself here. It appears to be Olsen She's trying to get to her feet. Training staff comes out here with 347 left in the half and says, stay put till you make sure you're okay. It's not a hot day. Temperature around 80. Wind blowing out of the south at around 15 to 20 miles an hour. But the normal high for this time of year is 79. Olsen... Comes off on her own power. She'll get a blast of Gatorade and probably come right back in the game. For the moment, the Cowgirls will play a man down. She'll report to the bench and now come right back on. So she is, and the Cowgirls are at full strength. 3.40 to go first half. Cowgirls scoreless here against Baylor, who they've not beaten since 2014. Trying to run that ball down at the halfway line. Henderson played back for the Cowgirls, trying to turn it. Huddleston's taken off the ball. We get a foul here. That foul is going to be called on Emily Bunnell. So a free kick for the Cowgirls. About 30 yards out. A little short kick there by So to Beffer, who splits two defenders. 
Then it's taken off the ball inside the near square of the 18. So with a header, another touch. Can't control it. Baylor to the sideline over here. And that ball's going to grow out. That should be. Oh, they're going to say this belongs to OSU. No, they're going to say it belongs to Baylor. Cowgirls and I first thought they were going to get the ball, but they called it the other way. It's up here for Baylor, by the way, as new player checks in for them. Chelsea Jumrati checks in. Defender, a freshman out of Maidenhead, England. 2.30 left in the half. Cowgirls win it at their own end, send it forward. Olsen on the near side. Double team to play off the ball by Schwartz. And right there to intercept Beffer. And, and then the uh, player there for the Cowgirls, Ganser, had it for a moment, but they couldn't control it. Baylor sends it back on offense. Kinsey down the ground the other way. This ball toward the back line. Ganser's already down there. Baylor will keep the possession, though. Bevington trying to turn and center it. Cowgirls win it off the ball, send it back out toward the halfway line. But, again, numbers for the Lady Bears with a minute 50 left in the half. They're back on offense toward their end of the, of the ground here at the other end, scoring-wise. Kinsey across, and that is blocked out of bounds. And let's see if that went out for a throw-in, and it did, near the flag at the near sideline at the other end of the ground. A minute and a half to play here in the first half. Baylor off a touch across. That clears everybody, and that will go across the back line for a Cowgirl goal kick with 120 left in the half. It's difficult with this win to judge sometimes where the ball's going to go. That's been a factor in a couple of plays for each team today. I will take this kick all the way to the halfway line, knocked down by Baylor. And the Cowgirls will have this wind at their back in the second half. We're under a minute to play. Baylor trying to control at the halfway line for maybe one more push here before halftime. Bevington across the line, sends it deep. Cowgirls play it back to the halfway line. Olsen knocks it down. Can she win it? Now Baylor has the touch there and sends it back the other way to the near sideline. And nice play there by Baylor to keep the ball inbounds by Kinsey, but it'll go across the back line for a goal kick with 30 seconds left in the half. So can the Cowgirls get it out of their own zone here in the final 20 seconds, or are they content to go to the locker room nil-nil? Taking their time here. Just want to make sure... <laughs> excuse me, in the final 10 seconds, they don't give up a goal. And they won't because that ball is kicked to the sideline. That'll bounce out. Baylor will get a throw in. And they don't really have to do much here as the clock will run to zero. And we're at halftime here in Stillwater. Score this game here at the break. The Cowgirls and the Baylor Lady Bears here in Stillwater. We'll come back after a timeout, recap the first half. This is Cowgirl Soccer from Learfield. Find your favorite everything at Cimarron Casino, Central Oklahoma's premier gaming spot. Win on over 600 slots, live action tables, and weekly promotions. Plus, fuel up for more fun at our always delicious Eagle's Nest Cafe and fourth quarter sports bar. Don't miss a minute of the action. Visit CimarronCasino.com for details. Cimarron Casino in Perkins. It's a whole new game. Owned and operated by the Iowa Tribe of Oklahoma. Hi, I'm Bill Knight for Bill Knight Ford. All sports are built on tradition, but at Bill Knight Ford, we know that here in Oklahoma, it's more than just a tradition. It's a way of life forged from loyalty and dedication. It's unwavering pride that survives the losses and is ignited by the wins. Bill Knight Ford is proud to support the OSU Cowboys and Cowgirls, Stillwater High School Pioneers, and the Perkins Tryon Demons. We wish them the best of luck this season. Stillwater Medical is proud to announce the addition of Carmen Legacy Hospice into our family of services. Stillwater's only nonprofit hospice and their staff of caring and dedicated professionals has been serving the community for over 35 years. Coping with a terminal illness can be overwhelming. Our staff wants you and your family to know that you are not alone. We will be by your side every step of the way, providing you with comfort and compassion. For more information about Carmen Legacy Hospice, call us at 405-377-8012. Need the right tool for the job? No matter how large or small, Herc Reynolds is the place to go. 
right here in Stillwater, Oklahoma, right now. Ask about the perfect tools for that job at Herc Reynolds on South Perkins Road. Go online to HercReynolds.com. No hype, no baloney, just sound, stable financial products and people who get you what you need. University and Community Federal Credit Union. Visit CUInTouch.com or come in 311 East McElroy to learn the privileges of membership. Federally insured by NCUA. Oh yeah, Fridays are fried baloney sandwich days. Back here in Stillwater at the Cowgirls Soccer Complex. At the break, Oklahoma State with a scoreless tie here, nil-nil against the Baylor Lady Bears. Both teams playing very well here in the first half. Very aggressive game for Baylor, especially with the number of fouls that they've had. Cowgirls have had the one yellow card, and they've had one offsides. We'll get to all that here in just a moment. Take a look at the numbers here at the break. Oklahoma State has been outshot by Baylor 7-3. to three. A lot of that was early in the first half. As Baylor really in the first 12 to 15 minutes was the uh, aggressor in this match. That is, uh, in, in a way, evened itself out a little bit in the final 30. Cowgirls both had, uh, both teams, Cowgirls and Baylor, had opportunities in that first half. Let them get away. Here are the numbers. The Cowgirls outshot by Baylor 7-3 in the first half. Baylor had the only two corner kicks of the first half. So the Cowgirls have now gone a game and a half without a corner. They didn't have one the other night against TCU. Fouls were 12-5 Baylor, and the team saves were 4-1 by the Cowgirls. Mikhail Ongaro had four saves to Jennifer Wands, one in the first half. Cowgirls' Lorraine Tressville had a yellow card in the first half, and the Cowgirls were called once for offsides. Ongaro had the four saves in 45 minutes, and Wand had the one save also in 45 minutes. The individual numbers for Baylor... Cameron Wenland had a shot and a shot on goal. That was early. Kennedy Brown, two shots and a shot on goal. Also, Julie James, two shots and a shot on goal. And Aline DeLima had two shots and a shot on goal. She and Wenland each had opportunities very early in this match. For the Cowgirls, J.C. Jones had a shot. Charmaine Morgan probably had the best chance coming in about the halfway point of the half, coming in from the right side a chance. The only shot on goal for the Cowgirls in the first half. And then off the bench, Anna Beffer had a shot, playing 22 minutes in her first game back in a while because of a leg injury. And uh, she had the other shot. So, again, the total seven shots for Baylor, four on goal. And for the Cowgirls, three shots and one on goal shot for Oklahoma State. For the Cowgirls scoreless here at halftime against Baylor as the crowd entertained here by some of the people that get in these plastic bubbles and roll around here at the break contest. They win something for their trouble. Again, two more home games after today, which we'll talk about more in just a moment. Coming up next, we'll look at what else is going on around the Big 12 as far as soccer today. All that coming up. This is Cowgirl Soccer from Learfield. Cowboy fans, skin cancer continues to be a growing epidemic. But Stillwater Dermatology Clinic is there for you. With locations in Stillwater and Ponca City, board-certified dermatologist Dr. Thomas Hall is available to help you with all your skin care needs. Dr. Hall treats acne, psoriasis, and all skin disorders, and also offers cosmetic and laser services. Call 405-533-DERM or visit stwderm.com today. Whether you're looking for a bite to eat before the game or a place to celebrate another Cowboys win, University Dining Services has you covered. With more than 30 individual restaurants across campus, there's something for everyone without ever having to leave campus. You'll find everything from freshly made sushi to top-notch burgers. So pull up a chair, dig in, and feed your inner cowboy. Be sure to learn more about University Dining Services at dining.okstate.edu. Cowboy fans, stop by Chris's University Spirit today to sign up for the Orange and Black Spirit Club for only $40. You'll receive a membership club shirt and a 20% off card good on items for one year from purchase. All you have to do is stop in at 244 South Knobloch on Campus Corner in Stillwater before it's too late. Also visit us online at chrisuniversityspirit.com today. This is 
Debbie from Charlie's Discount Drug again, reminding you to take your vitamins. Our full line of Mason Natural Vitamins and Herbs are available every day to help you maintain your health. And every month, we have Mason Natural Vitamin and Herb Specials. At Charlie's Discount Drug, we believe in maintaining your health at discount prices so you can spend your money on the things that make life worth maintaining. So come by and check out our monthly Mason Natural Vitamin and Herb Specials today. Charlie's Discount Drug, 723 South Walnut in Stillwater. Halftime here in Stillwater, and the Cowgirls are scoreless with Baylor. And believe it or not, all three games in the league today are at the same spot, scoreless. 0-0. Texas and OU are headed to overtime down in Norman. And it, suddenly Oklahoma has started playing some better soccer. They don't have a whole lot on the win-loss column to show for it. Cowgirls beat them twice earlier in the year. Number eight, Texas, 88th minute is scoreless at OU. Texas Tech and TCU are playing down in Lubbock today, and they're at halftime, and that game is also scoreless, 0-0. And our game here is a 0-0 tie as well. So there are no goals today so far in the Big 12. On Friday night, Tech beat Texas, or I should say the other way around. Texas won that game in overtime, uh, 3-2, to two, double overtime as a matter of fact, 3-2 to two at uh, Austin over Tech. West Virginia was a 1-0 winner at K-State on Friday night. Our game, of course, with Oklahoma State, a 2-0 win at TCU. Uh, Baylor played to that uh, double overtime tie at OU, and then Kansas won at Iowa State 2-1 on Friday night. And again, some of the teams do not play today. So to start the day, Texas 3-0, Oklahoma State 2-0, West Virginia 2-1, TCU 2-1. In the conference, Baylor won one and one. So is Tech. So is Kansas. Oklahoma was 0-1 and one. And then K State and Iowa State have yet to win a conference game, both 0 and 3. Iowa State has struggled this year. They had lost six in a row after Friday. They're 2-10 and one. Iowa Kansas State has lost three in a row, five six and one. Again, they're not playing today either. Oklahoma 2-8 and two. Kansas 6-5 and two. Tech eight three and one, Baylor seven two and two, TCU eight and four, West Virginia nine and three, Oklahoma State nine one and two, second in the league right now, and the leading goal scoring team in the league with thirty two, and then Texas eleven and zero. Told you earlier about the RPI, Oklahoma State number seventy and ranked number nineteen in this week's poll. Nationally. The, uh, the poll this week, if you take a look at the national rankings, UCLA number one, Stanford number two, South Carolina number three, then Duke, North Carolina, Penn State, USC, and then Texas at number eight, West Virginia at number nine, Florida and Cal and Wisconsin, then Central Florida, Princeton, Virginia, Rutgers, Georgetown, Mississippi, and then the Cowgirls. This is the United Soccer Coaches poll. Wake Forest, Florida State, Notre Dame, Texas A&M, who the Cowgirls tied earlier, 23rd, Utah, and then Tennessee. In the South region, the Cowgirls are third now behind West Virginia and Texas, who's the number one team in the South region of the United Soccer Coaches Poll. Rice, Baylor, TCU, Kansas, Tech, Charlotte, Alabama, Birmingham, UAB is 10th. Murray State, North Texas, Belmont, Austin P, and Florida Atlantic are the top 15. The other coaches poll, or the other soccer polls, I should say, have UCLA unanimous number one, Soccer America, Top Drawer Soccer, and Hero Sports. The Cowgirls are number 20 by Top Drawer Soccer. They do not rank in the top 25 in either Soccer America or in the Hero Sports poll. Texas number 21 in that poll. And to give you an idea, 23rd ranked A&M is ninth in the Hero Sports poll. In the uh, top drawer soccer poll, and by the way, West Virginia is not ranked in that hero sports poll, which is hard to believe. West Virginia is 10th, and, and Texas is 8th in that top drawer soccer poll, won the Cowgirls number 20. And then in Soccer America, West Virginia is 11, Texas 7, with UCLA as the number one team in the country. All these uh, jerseys today that the Cowgirls are wearing will be auctioned off at the next home game which will be Kansas State's first ever appearance in soccer in Stillwater. They are a new team in the league this year for the first time. They had a 
provisional team last year after getting ready to drop equestrian. And so they added soccer to stay inside the Title IX issues or outside them, depending on your point of view. And so with that, they have added soccer, and they will be here for their first ever match in Stillwater coming up on the 20th. That is a little less than three weeks away. And that's a 3 o'clock game. And again, these white jerseys with the pink numbers and letters on them today, the Cowgirls wearing with their uniform numbers on them today, will be auctioned off at that event. And that is a special start time, by the way, of 3 o'clock. So keep that in mind on October the 20th. Then on that Sunday, the 22nd, a 1 o'clock game like today, three weeks from today, the Cowgirls will host a very good Kansas team that's in here. Kansas right now sitting at 6-5-2, and two, but they're always dangerous. Cowgirls found that out last year late in the game up in Lawrence. They'll be in here for a 1 o'clock match coming up on the 22nd. That'll be senior day, and all the seniors will be honored at the course of the day. So keep that in mind. Only two home games left. You, by the way, can get your tickets, four packs for $15, by using the promo code at Cowgirl soccer website okstate.com or you can just call 877-ALL-4-OSU and get your tickets that way as well. Well, we'll see if there's any offense for goals in this second half. Cowgirls and Baylor had plenty of offense in the first half, just couldn't find the back of the net. We'll see what happens here as halftime coming up to an end here in the second half coming up shortly. Cowgirls 0-0, nil-nil here with the Baylor Lady Bears in Stillwater. This is Cowgirl Soccer from Learfield. Hi, I'm Brandi Moore, pharmacist at Tiger Drug, 825 South Walnut in Stillwater. My uncle, Calvin Anthony, who owned Tiger for 47 years, recently turned over the business to me and other pharmacists who work here. We want you to know we have every intention of continuing the same tradition of quality, personal, caring service you've come to expect at Tiger Drug. From all of us at Tiger Drug, thank you. Can you name the university that has won the most football games? At Johnson's of Kingfisher, we have a record number of new Ram 1500s and 2500s, America's longest lasting pickups. In stock and during Ram Power Days, our low prices will win you over. Who has won the most college football games? The University of Michigan. Make that short drive to Kingfisher during Ram Power Days. It's our 90th year and still going strong at Johnson's of Kingfisher, Dodge, Chrysler, Jeep, and Ram. Same name. Same family. Since, since 1927. 1927. Stillwater Country Club is one of Oklahoma's classic golf venues. SCC is the site of several prominent amateur competitions each year, and Stillwater Country Club has hosted the Men's NCAA Championship as well as the Women's National Collegiate Championship. SCC's beautiful layout offers elevation changes and tree-lined fairways that are unique in the Oklahoma golf experience. It's playable for beginners, yet it's challenging enough to serve as a practice venue for the Cowboy and Cowgirl golf squads. Stillwater Country Club, celebrating a rich history, embracing a bright future. Buzzy's Taco Shop on the Strip in Stillwater is the new home for the Coach Colin Carmichael Show. Join us this fall every Tuesday to meet Coach Carmichael and discuss all things Cowgirl soccer as they fight for the Big 12 title. All game days start at Buzzy's with its casual, fun atmosphere, Baja-style Mexican food, and ice-cold beer on the patio. Feed your addiction at Buzzy's, proud sponsor of Cowgirl soccer. And make sure to like us on Facebook and download our app for great deals. Your home for OSU Cowgirl Basketball, KGFY Stillwater, Cowboy Country 105.5 FM. Wind picks up here at the Cowgirl Soccer Complex. We're about set to go as our referee Bernard Hosu sets the ball for play in the second half underway. Baylor goes in green from our right to left and will defend the goal to our right. The Cowgirls will uh, defend the goal to our left. Actually, they'll be the other way. Yeah, that's right. That's right. They'll defend the goal to our left. I got confused there for a moment. And a foul here at midfield, and this will be a free kick for Oklahoma State as they go left to right and defend the west goal, or the south goal, I should say. And the north goal defended by Baylor. Kalon Garl to our left and Jennifer Wan to our right. All played down the ground. The Cowgirls see it go out of bounds. This is off of OSU, and so a Baylor throw in. Has run away here in the first minute of the second half. Wind at the Cowgirls back here in the second half. They were outshot 7-3 in the first half. Scoreless game here in Stillwater. Both teams with chances. Baylor a number of them early. Cowgirls kind of even things out 
after about the 15-minute mark. OSU on offense as they play it back at the halfway line. Our interest field over to the far wing. They'll play it up the ground. Across the line by Rodriguez. She'll get a touch back and will bring it forward. Cowgirls will try to use this wind if they can to their advantage here at the second half mark. They will win it. A very quick team as they bring the ball up the sideline. It'll trail off and the Cowgirls will have a throw in over on the far sideline. And every week, something different over here on the construction, which will be completed next summer and brand new $20 million addition to this facility. I'm told they're also going to redo the field next year and hopefully make it as good, if not better, than it already is. Here's a deep ball played by the Cowgirls. This will be a goal kick for Baylor. I asked Colin about that on his coach's show the other night. Is they going to do anything to field? He says, yes, they're going to replace it. The original grass that's been here since 1996 so it's probably due to be replaced. Watt sends a high kick into the wind. The Cowgirls try to knock it down. They're going to try to run it down. They were a sliding tackle to play off the ball, and they'll try to win it, and they do on the offensive end. Touch over here on the near side. Send it into the box. See if they can run it down over here. A chance for DeLema. Falls down. She wants a penalty kick. Nothing's called. Now a collision out here in front of the Cowgirls taking off the ball. Baylor has been very aggressive in a yellow card coming up here against Baylor. This will be against Sarah King, the junior two-year letter winner and three-year starter out of Coppell, Texas. So the Cowgirls will get a free kick. That's their first caution of the game. And Han will send it into the forward end. Over the top of Woodard, it's headed down right into her back. Chance there for Morgan if she can play it forward. It went off of her. She fell down. Now Baylor will touch it near side and it'll go off, and this will be a Baylor throw in. It's off the Cowgirls. That's probably the right call there at the top of the 18. So will throw in here for the Lady Bears as we play two and a half minutes here in the second half. Baylor trying to avoid their fourth straight overtime game. All in conference play. Enter down by the Cowgirls. Baylor tries to clear that ball, gets caught up in the wind. And the Lady Bears have to run it down in their own zone across the way. Schwartz on the far wing. That ball goes to the sideline. And this will be a throw-in coming up here for Baylor. In the wind in Baylor's face here, Cowgirls back in the second half. And into our mics. Baylor plays it ahead. Here they come down the center of the ground. Nice chance here in front. This is Henderson a blast, and it goes wide to the far post. This will be a goal kick. Oklahoma State will kick it away. Now, they've been using their defenders in the first half against the wind to take the goal kicks. I think Ungaro will get to punch this out now with her leg here with the wind at her back. That's the way they'll set it up. She approaches the ball, and... Kicks it a low line drive into the edge of the center circle. Baylor player knocks it down, but then she gets knocked down, and now Baylor will play it back the other way. They go right to left here in the second half. Scoreless game. We are four minutes into the second half. Balls to the sideline, far side of the ground. Paget. Cowgirls have a touch, but it goes out of bounds, and it goes to Baylor on a throw in. Baylor across the way, sends it back to the near wing. King will play it forward. This is Kennedy Brown. And across the back line, this will be a goal kick again for the Cowgirls. Baylor, despite having scored only 16 goals all season, and now 11 and a half games, again, have only given up five all year. Two in each half and one in an overtime. A line drive by Angaro. Big header sends it the other way by Brown. Cowgirls try to dig it out of their own zone. We get a foul here, and this will be called on Baylor on Cameron Wendland. Wendland out of Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Played at San Diego State before she came to Baylor. Ball played to Baylor, and they'll bring it back the other way. Going from right to left into the forward end. On the 
near sideline. Taken for a moment there by James. Couldn't play it forward. Now they'll start over again with King. King, top of the square, tries to center it. The Cowgirls clear it way back down the ground. Baylor has to go run it down before Woodard gets there, and the keeper on one hop kicks it the other way. Enter off the halfway line. Cowgirls trying to move it forward again from left to right. And they have numbers down the offensive side. This is Webb coming in from the far side wing. Tries to work around her man Schwartz over there. Gets taken off the ball. Both players down. The ball goes out. It's off the Cowgirls. This will be a throw in for Baylor. That ball almost to the back corner, but not quite. Maybe five yards off. Eight, maybe. Baylor deep in their own zone has to throw it in. And it goes out, and this will be off of Baylor again with 38-40 left in regulation. Still no score. Boy, first team to score today might win this one. All inbounded on the throw in to Wentline on the far side, but he centers it to the center circle where it's intercepted by OSU by Morgan. Baylor has numbers coming back to the ball, and so they're able to play it ahead. This is Brown again. Brown. Defender playing it ahead. Cowgirls try to intercept far away. They turn it and send it up the ground. Looking on the wing for Winland. Ball's played over into the construction zone. And up against the fence. Off of Baylor, a Cowgirl throw in. Webb on the short touch, gets it right back. Now sends it ahead looking for So. That ball's going to go off her on the far sideline and out of bounds for a throw in. So Baylor will do it again here, 7-15 into the second half. Cowgirls play it ahead. Nice blast to get it to Kumba So. Or actually, that's Woodard across the line. Coming down now on the far wing. Beffer over on the far side. Starting here in the second half, looks to play a little cross, and it goes across the back line before the near post. Touched by Baylor, so this will be the first corner kick in two games for Oklahoma State. They did not have one the other night at TCU. They have out-cornered their opponents this year, 80 now to 46. First one here. Will be Anna Beffer to the right of the keeper. With the wind bending it toward the box. Head her out by Baylor as they send it out of the square. James out high trying to run it down is Dilema. And the Cowgirls have numbers as they played their defenders back. They send it towards So. It's bounced away by Baylor. A high kick here and a foul by Baylor in the process out top of the 18. So this is maybe at about the 23 yard line. Almost straight on to the keeper at the north end here, Jennifer Watt, with the wind at the Cowgirls' back. Baylor will set a three-man line at the 18-yard line. Let's see who takes this kick. Now four-man line. Here we go. Here's a strong kick and a save on a leaping grab by Wendt at the upper shelf on the far side. That was Beffer on the chance there out front. So the Cowgirls with an opportunity to try to bend one in there, and it wouldn't go. Keeper had a good read on it. All pinballs around. Cowgirls try to win it back. Hahn intercepts a pass at the halfway line. Brings it down to So, who gets it to Beffer. Now Morgan coming in from the back side. Had a chance earlier. Cross in front. Cleared away. This will go way out of bounds. And it went across for a throw in near the flag at the back line on the near sideline. We played almost 10 minutes here in the second half. There is still no score in this game. Cowgirls trying to win for the first time in three years against Baylor. Boy, almost a handball there. That ball went across the back line. Gonna, well, I'll take that. If they're not going to call the handball, take the uh, corner. The Cowgirls will get that on a non-call there, maybe. And a chance here for Kim Rodriguez and the Cowgirls to take the 
corner kick, this time to the left of the keeper. Strong leg. This ball will bend in toward the six. Let's see if the Cowgirls can get their sixth goal off a corner. Strong kick, top of the square, and the keeper just leaps up in the crowd and grabs it. Well, that's the way you defeat that theory. You're the offensive team. Defensively, just go get it. Went, Want, by the way, is 5'10", so she gets way up there to try to leap and get that ball. She had no problem grabbing that out of a crowd. This ball bounces down toward Ongaro, who just kind of punts it back to the halfway line, 11 minutes in to the second half. And no score, but here come the Cowgirls again. Good centering pass in front. Down the far side, a chance in front and right to the keeper. Woodard coming in from the right, or left side, I should say. And a diving play there by Wand again. So Wand will punt it away or boot it away and get it down to the other end of the ground. Baylor player taking off the ball. No call. Well, they're letting him play today. And now the Cowgirls bring it back the other way. Jones in traffic trying to set up Haley at the top. Now Jones coming in backside a player. That's Beffer on the far corner. Looks for the cross, right to the keeper. Inside the six-yard square near the far post. Juan again just runs it out of there and then whips it out to the sideline where it's run down by DeLima, and here they come the other way. DeLima across the line on the dribble and then gets taken off the ball and a foul on the Cowgirls. They'll call this on Charmaine Morgan, a free kick here for Baylor. Short kick Brown brings it into the forward end. Third out by Tresfield. Enter at the halfway line there. Baylor played off the ball again and a foul, this time on Jones, as again DeLima is taken down. So now a straight on free kick. Well, I say straight on. It's a little bit of an angle. Narrow hash marks. This would be angle to the right if this was football. American football, that is. You soccer purists out there get mad at me when I say that. But I'm just trying to set this as a reference point. Delima has a big enough play on this ball with this kick. She could knock it in. That's exactly what she's going to try to do. Their player falls down. In fact, the Cowgirl player down also. No foul inside the 18 by either team. And so a chance for Ungaro to make a play on the ball and blast it the other way. Referee today is letting them play. Bernard Hosu. Chance there for the Cowgirls taking off the ball. And Baylor will win it the other way. Brown with that wrap on that right leg. No trouble running as she gets it into the top of the 18. Wendland there will send it across the ground. They have a player coming in from the backside, Schwartz. Schwartz plays it toward the square off of Ungaro. Players down for both teams, and it's cleared away by the Cowgirls by Morgan, and play on, says the official. Now a chance again for Baylor as they attack in front. A little dribbler through the square, and it'll be picked up there by the keeper. Well, that song, Danger Zone, about 30 years ago, that's where the Cowgirls just found themselves. They were in the danger zone there a moment ago. Boys, a chance for Woodard, and they're going to throw the flag up, I think, for offside or a foul. Woodard gets called for a foul here as she came down toward the top of the 18 at the other end of the ground. So a free kick for Baylor at the other end. They go right to left in the green uniforms here in the second half. Cowgirls wearing the white with the pink numbers. Again, those auctioned, uh, those uniforms, rather, those jerseys will be auctioned off at the next game against Kansas State for breast cancer awareness. A couple of headers by the Cowgirls. Lenar trying to turn it to Beffer, who gets poked in the eye. Boy, a collision there, and we may have a card here on a high hit by Baylor, and that's going to be the case, and that's the right call. So the... Penalty here will be a free kick for the Cowgirls and a yellow card for Baylor. Just to the left of the halfway line, Rodriguez will poke this ball down to the front of the 18. Big Baylor header. Now knocked down by So at the top of the 18. They'll play it again. Trying to work it into the square. Beffer left the right side, sends it in there. A header by Baylor, sends it out of the square. A header by the Cowgirls, sends it back. Now a touch by Baylor, one at the top of the halfway area there by Lennart. Now to Beffer, comes inside, shot, and it goes over the top of the crossbar. The left-footed blast by Anna Beffer 
just missed by about a foot and a half. That's the best look on goal today for Oklahoma State. They'll bring some speed in the game. Baylor will with Lauren Piercy checking in, the junior, junior out of Amarillo. She'll come in for Kennedy Brown. Brown, again, has been having issues with that right leg. They are limiting her minutes here today. Goal kick for Baylor. They'll send it into the forward end. Cowgirls get a touch but have to go run it down off a of Baylor kick. They'll just send it back to the halfway line as we drop below 29-30 left in regulation. Scoreless game here in Stillwater so far. First team to one could win. We'll see. Baylor on the attack again. Here's King. Center of the ground. Here's James coming in. Shoots. And toward the near post, it's a one-hopper right to Angara. They have kept Michaela busy today. But nothing to show for it on the board except a zero. Cowgirls in the same spot against this goalkeeper, Jennifer Watt. Now Beffer off the kick, sends it up the ground, or has it. On the dribble, they go in to So. Kumba looking for a touch by Woodard. Now back to Kumba. Oh, nobody came in on the wing, and that ball belongs to Baylor. They were looking for somebody to come in on this near side. J.C. Jones, I think, got turned around. Oh, they send it on a cross at the center of the ground, and So has it now to Beffer, but it's intercepted again by Baylor. And here come the Lady Bears right to left into the forward end. Piercy into the forward end. Knocked down is Wentland. She'll play on. Another board by Hahn. Has to go back to the center of the ground, and they'll move it back now on the far wing. Boy, a collision. Cowgirl player taken off her feet. That was Webb. No call there. Could have gone either way. Instead, it goes neither way. And the Cowgirls end up winning, I think, the possession, and they'll end up getting it toward out of their own end. This is a centering pass in the center circle to Jones. Here come the Cowgirls, three on five. Cowgirls, touched there by Baylor. Nobody coming in where the ball ended up. So the Lady Bears with a play the other way. Comes across the line on the dribble. Sends it into the forward end looking for Wendland there. Across the halfway line. And toward the center of the ground. There's a blast from way out. That's going to go wide. And a goal kick for the Cowgirls again. Subs for both teams here as for OSU, Rachel Van Fossen will check back in. And Haley Woodard will come out. Also out for the Cowgirls is Kumba So and Marlo Zoller is back in. So play continues here. And a goal kick for the Cowgirls. Header sends the ball toward the far sideline, past the halfway line to our right. This will be a Baylor throw in. 26-40 left in the game. Oklahoma State scoreless here with the Baylor Lady Bears on this Sunday in Stillwater. Touch there by Baylor, a throw in, and now the referee blows his whistle. They may have thrown it in too soon, and then we have a sub anyway, so Cammie Huddleston checking back in, and also back in for Baylor is Haley Sawinski. Let's see who comes out for Baylor. I believe it's going to be Reagan Padgett. The play continues with the Cowgirls on the ball at the far sideline on a throw-in. Baylor, though, intercepts at the center of the ground. Here they come, two on three. Maybe a chance here in front, and it's offsides anyway as the far side official Jack Damrell throws up the flag. Cameron Weinland was coming in from the back side. And the first offsides by Baylor today. Free kick for the Cowgirls with 25-40 left in the match in regulation. I have to start saying that now. Deep kick, Baylor at the halfway line, heads it the other way. Cowgirls send it back into the Baylor zone where they kick it out of bounds, and the Cowgirls will have a throw in on the far sideline. Baylor the aggressor early with three early opportunities, and then it kind of evened out. It's been that way here in the second half, too. Both teams with chances. All the over on the far side, played off the ball for a moment. And they get it over there in the corner. 
It's here for Beffer. She can center it. Comes in toward the square left side. Looks to play it in front. Chance there and a shot. Blocked. And a second opportunity. That ball stays on the ground. And the keeper right there in front. Off the second chance opportunity. Coming in from the near side. That was Morgan again coming in from this near wing. Good defense there by Baylor to play her off the ball. Here's Morgan again coming down the near side. Looks for the cross. And it dribbles to the keeper inside the six-yard square. Coming up toward the halfway point of the second half here. It's every bit the game we thought it would be. Baylor, a very good team. If you just joined us, 7 2 and 2, 1 1 and 1, not ranked, but getting votes in the top 25. The Cowgirls at number 19, 9 1 and 2, and 2 0 and 0 in the league. They were trying to play it out of their zone. The Cowgirls looking for a header, get one from Hahn and send it down to Lenhart. Cross the line on a touch. Beffer trying to play it on the run to Huddleston, but it's intercepted and brought the other way. Cowgirls get it back at the halfway line. He'll play it with Zoller. Now to Rodriguez. He'll punch it down, trying to get Marlowe to run it down. Ball toward the back line. And the Baylor player goes flying. They want a foul, and nothing's called. It's a goal kick anyway for Baylor. Their keeper just kind of threw up her hands and said, where's the foul? Fortunately, with the wind blowing in her face, the official probably didn't hear her. So they'll set the ball for play again. Again, Baylor kicks this goal kick against the wind, which is blowing at about 15 to 20 miles an hour. Ball in the air dies in the circle, a header by the Cowgirls. Baylor will run it down over here on the near side. They get it to Piercy. Now they'll play it off the near wing. This is James back up the ground, and this will go out of bounds, and the Cowgirls will have a throw in. Sub here for Baylor. As Wineland will check out. Cowgirls also bring Claire Ganser back in. And Marissa Kinsey is back in. Sophomore out of Allen, Texas for Baylor. Cowgirls have a throw in right here to our left on the near sideline with the halfway point reached to the second half. 22.30 to go. Scoreless here in Stillwater. Chance here for Baylor. Nice win there by Kinsey. To get the ball trying to center it to DeLima. Brings it up the ground, James. Shot from way out, goes to the far post and way over. So another goal kick for Oklahoma State. We've said that a lot today. Baylor came out here in the first 15 minutes and was really the aggressor. Cowgirls kind of woke up, made it even from that point on. Cowgirls defense and goalkeeper Michaela Ungaro kept Baylor out of the scoreboard. And it's been scoreless ever since. Now Baylor knocks down the kick, sends it forward, but it's played out of there by Hahn to the halfway line. Cowgirls trying to run it down. Baylor has numbers, and they'll win it. With 21-30 to go in regulation, a scoreless game. As I said earlier, first team to one may win. Here's a centering chance in front here for Piercy, and the ball just rolls to the keeper. A little dribbler, and it wasn't uh, meant to be a shot, I don't think. Garo made the easy play on the ball. Team came out, by the way, at the start of the second half. And Garo had a few words for her teammates. They were all positive, trying to fire them up. And she was loud enough to be heard by the crowd. I think it fired them up. Here's Baylor down the far side. Haley Sawiski looks for the cross on the center. Doesn't get it. Baylor's played off the ball for a moment. Now Huddleston playing more at midfield today than forward. Cowgirls look to turn it and play it ahead. Zoller just wrapped up there at the halfway line. There's no foul. Baylor player goes down after a collision with OSU player with Rodriguez. Cowgirls will win it and play it ahead. They go left to right. 20 minutes, 38 seconds to go in the game. Marlowe in traffic over on the wing. Looks to play it forward. Centers it near the halfway line. And Lenard will bring it down. Julia had an opportunity in the first half as well. Rodriguez again, touching the center there by uh, Huddleston. Unable to control. Now the Cowgirls, an open ball in the center of the ground, win it back. They have numbers beyond the halfway line. This is Webb. He has to play it back to Hahn. Careful there that 
Piercy doesn't run her down. Literally take the ball away from her. She got it away from him. And so to the other side of the ground now, it's brought down by Van Fossen, but too strong. It'll go across the back line, and this will be a goal kick again for Baylor with 19.50 to go. Again, the Cowgirls won't play at home again until October the 20th. Kansas State here for the first time ever in soccer. And then Kansas here on that Sunday, two weekends, three weekends from now for senior day. Somebody lost their headband at the halfway line. They'll go back and retrieve that in a moment, but official say play on. Hahn runs down a loose ball near sideline. No foul as Baylor takes her off the ball. Cowgirls try to win it back. Again, they send it forward, and this time Webb is spread eagle there as she was taken off the ball by the Baylor player, Lauren Piercy, in a foul. Baylor had 12 fouls in the first half. They've got to be up around 20 now. Another new thing we'll have next year, by the way, we're told, is instant stats at our table. That will be nice. Cal goes off the free kick, played to the sideline, and it'll be a Baylor touch, and so a throw in for the Cowgirls. And subs here for Oklahoma State. J.C. Jones had checked out. She's going to be back in for Oklahoma State. And she'll come in for Anna Beffer. Again, played 22 minutes in the first half. Has probably played that much here in the second half as her minutes again are limited coming off that leg injury. First thought that thigh bone might have had a crack in it or turned turned out to be a deep bruise and a muscle issue. So she didn't have to be out the rest of the year. It healed up or is healing up. Baylor a deep ball. Cowgirls with numbers. Boy, they get tripped up. No call. A chance in front and a blast and a diving save off the shot by Piercy to the near post and the Cowgirl player down outside the 18. That's Elise Hahn and she's up and okay. Elise favoring her right calf maybe a little bit. She says she's all right. They give her her headband back, and she'll resume play here in a moment. Situation where she might have taken a blow on the side of the calf as opposed to the shin area where that is protected. So she's going to be okay. 18 minutes to go. Baylor wins the ball back at the halfway line and come back on offense. On this near sideline, chance there for Kinsey. Cross in front is blocked. On the ball won by the Cowgirls. Lenart with help trying to get it out of her own zone. Rodriguez into the forward end. Plays it halfway line to Zoller. She gets pushed in the back. No foul. Ball runs the wrong way. Trying to dig it out. Play on says the official. Baylor wins the touch. Here they come. A blast is blocked in front by uh, Tressfield. Off the play there by the Baylor player at the front of the 18. Ball pinballs to the sideline. So Whiskey runs it down. Eka Unigay checks it again, tries to center it. Chance here for Baylor. They head it forward, and Angaro has to come out to the six and fall on the ball. Boy, that was nearly an opportunity there, maybe the best of the game for the Lady Bears of that opportunity there for Kinsey. But Angaro wins the ball first, 16.50 to go. Here's Zoller the other way for the Cowgirls. Marlowe on the far wing, looks for the cross, centers it in front. 1v2 here. Chance there played off the ball in front of Jones by Baylor. Now the Cowgirls have to be careful at the halfway line and only let Baylor get behind him and go down the other way. They'll keep possession here with 16.30 to go. A scoreless game here in Stillwater in the second period of this game in regulation. Cowgirl player down the foul on Baylor. They'll call this on King. Free kick here for Oklahoma State. About eight yards to the right of the halfway line. Tressfield will take this. Boy, she sends a deep ball into the square, and the keeper outside the six just reaches up with that 5'10 frame and grabs the ball. We saw that on a corner earlier by Oklahoma State by Bayer. Nice play by Webb coming up to take the ball away. Now Jones down the ground for Zoller. Played off the ball for a moment. J.C. will have it. Tries to get around her man and does. Cowgirls start over. That ball hits the official. And again, the official's in play. So it's not a dead ball. Crowd may not understand that. The official's like an umpire in baseball. He's in the field of play. He's part of the game. 
They were just mad, I think, that he stopped the momentum. Now the ball out of bounds again, and the sub for the Cowgirls as Kumbasso checks back in along with Charmaine Morgan for the Cowgirls. And back in for Baylor is the starter, Allie Henderson, at midfield. This should be OSU's ball on a throw in across the way, but we'll double check here, and that is what's going to happen with 15 12 to go. Will anybody score today? First team to one may win this one. As we're scoreless here as we are 75 minutes into this thing. Baylor a touch. They just send it back to their keeper. Keep it away from the Cowgirls defensively. Now Watt plays it to the far wing, and they'll start on offense. Going right to left against the wind here. Cowgirls in the white with the pink numbers and letters today. Those jerseys will be auctioned off at the next home game for breast cancer awareness. Cowgirls with a touch and a throw in. Now they'll center it back to the halfway line and start over on offense going left to right. Jones played off the ball. Nobody out there except the Cowgirls, and they'll send it back to their offensive end. Way up in the air by Baylor. Need a header here to come down with this one. The ball kind of dies outside the 18. Chance there in front, but a foul on Oklahoma State. Dollar came up the back of the Baylor player and gets called for the foul. It's been a very physical game. I would bet there have been over 30 fouls. I know there have been called in this game. Keeper will come out. Baylor will take the free kick as the wind again revs up here. And a strong kick against this wind toward the top of the 18. The ball's headed in that direction. Now girls try to knock it down. And Tressfield does, but it's to open ground across the way, and there's Schwartz. Sends it into the square. Bicycle kick heads, or actually tries to center it toward the top of the six, and the Cowgirls able to bring it out of the zone, at least toward the halfway line anyway. Baylor keeping the pressure on here with 13.20 to go. Another opportunity here for Henderson. It's played back to a midfielder. Now forward, so will knock it down for the Cowgirls. Gets it back off of a touch and sends it to Zoller at the halfway line. And now here comes Charmaine Morgan. She gets taken off the ball, and it's taken there by King. Very physical game today. Morgan trying to win it. There's help from Hahn, who sends it the other way. Nobody down there, though, for the Cowgirls except Zoller, and she was 40 yards off the ball. And so it'll be a... Pick up there by the Baylor keeper, Watt, and kicks it high against the wind. The ball dies in the air at the halfway line. Cowgirls trying to knock it down. 12.38 to go. Still no score. Nice tackle there by OSU to try to win the possession. They do. Here comes Morgan down the near side. Looks to throw, uh, send it down into the top of the 18. That ball clears. The player coming down looked like Huddleston in the middle of that crowd. And so the Baylor keeper able to take the open ball. 12 minutes to go in regulation. Still no score. Baylor trying to get it out of their own zone. They go from right to left again here if you're not watching on the internet. Cowgirls send it back. It goes way out of bounds. It bounces way up into the construction zone over there. That's the best one so far this year. That made it to the second level over there. So a throw in for OSU and subs here for both teams. Cowgirls bring Beffer and Woodard back in. And back in is Brown and DeLima for Baylor, two of their best players on offense. So a couple of offensive switch outs here for both teams. Huddleston and Zoller go out for the Cowgirls. And with 11.28 to go, let's see if they add some speed here and try to get it forward. Cowgirls fans want a handball, nothing called. Cowgirls will keep the possession. Beffer coming in left side toward the back line, too strong. It'll be a goal kick for Baylor. The wind can help you and it can hurt you, and that time I think it pushed the ball across the back line. Reminder after this game, the Cowgirls will be signing autographs. If you are here in the crowd or listening to me, you can get something signed here by these players. They'll have posters and things coming up. Be better after a win. Baylor a kick against the wind here, and now contact and a foul by the Lady Bears. Another foul just at the edge of the circle 
On the right of the halfway line, the Cowgirls get a quick free kick with 10.30 to go. Still no score here in Stillwater. Nobody home down the ground, and the Cowgirls can't run it down. Now they do defensively, and here comes Rodriguez in traffic. Tries to send it forward, and they'll end up winning it over there with Woodard trying to center a chance in front. Beffer it right to the keeper, and Anna got taken hard down at the end of the play. She appears to be all right. She's had two look, good looks, one at each half, here in this one. Chance here out front, maybe at the halfway line. They can't turn it. That's actually Lenhard a moment ago. I want to correct myself. Had that opportunity. We just had a couple of looks in each half as well here as we're down below 10 minutes to go. Lenhard again tries to win it at the halfway line to so, and now they'll turn it and bring it down. In traffic. Al girls look to try to center it. This is Beffer this time. Forward end. Chance there, can't win it. They'll try to play it out of the zone. Baylor will. Cowgirls run it down, try to keep it at the halfway line. To keep it in the Baylor defensive zone to our right. So we'll bring it across the line. Gets it over here for Jones. Open ground there, nobody home. And Baylor will run that down and bring it back up the ground. Taken there by Kinsey. And coming out of the... Square is on Garo to make a play and a 1v1 defensive play there. And the Cowgirls asking for a foul. Nothing called as the Baylor player came in on the square. That was a chance to believe there for Kinsey. Now the ball to the sideline. A Cowgirls throw in coming up. But first, a sub as we see uh, Anna Webb checking back in for Oklahoma State. 8.30 and the clock running left to go as Claire Ganser will come out of the lineup for Oklahoma State. Still scoreless here in Stillwater. And if the game ends a tie, we'll have at least one overtime period or until somebody scores. After a second overtime period, if no one has scored, the game will be a draw. Cowgirls deep in their own, in the uh, Baylor zone, can't control it. Now they'll run it down and take it away from DeLima on a kick. Our side wing with eight minutes to go. Looking for the chance in front, threading through traffic. Cowgirls try to set it up. Chance there. Can't win it. Taken off the ball and a good play by King. Now a chance in front. Bet for a blast. That's going to go way high. And that's going to go out for a goal kick. There was a collision down at the top of the 18, but again, I think it was mutual collision there as neither team was going to get Call for a foul. There have been a lot of fouls today. There have been a lot of collisions and things that were not called, but also some good defensive plays by both teams, too. So, in the end, it's evened out. Now a foul here by Baylor, and this will give the Cowgirls a ball on a free kick to the left of the halfway line with 7-10 to go. Well, it was late on Friday when the Cowgirls put balls in the net, and let's see if they can do it here. Strong kick by Rodriguez. Woodard can't control it. They clear it back. Baylor does to the halfway line. And they'll send it down the ground. The Cowgirls try to run it down. They do, and we'll keep play it back to Ungaro. Sends a low-line drive kick the other way. That's a big header by Baylor to the far sideline, and a throw-in with 6.40 to go at the halfway line for Oklahoma State. So far, it's nil-nil. Cowgirls have not lost at home this year. No losses and no ties. 6-0 and at home. Baylor is 2-0-2 in all games on the road this year. So they haven't lost on the road either. Ball kicked to the sideline by Baylor. This will be a Cowgirl throw in. And Fawson will check back in for the Cowgirls as Lenhart will take a seat here. And back in for Baylor will be Reagan Padgett, one of their starters. Also looks like Julie James has checked back in for Baylor. Morgan will throw it in. So played off the ball near sideline. 5.50 to go. Scoreless game. And Baylor with the touch, but it goes out of bounds off the Cowgirls. And a deep throw in. Baylor trying to run this down along the near sideline. James 
And then a collision and a tackle by Morgan and a foul on Oklahoma State. So this is going to be to the right of Ungaro on the free kick. Five yards maybe to the left, maybe less than that, of the 18-yard square at about the 12-yard line. Now girl send two on the defense. Baylor has to be careful of offsides here. Here's the play to the six-yard square, a header up in the air, and that's played away by the Cowgirls. Baylor with chances out front now. They bring it in from the far side, look for the cross in front. A header, that's going to go wide of the goal and played out by the Cowgirls again. This will go to the sideline and a throw in. Akinurage almost had the header inside the upper right uh, shelf on the far post coming in from the left side. Just missed. It went across the bottom of the goal square. Chance in front. Baylor and Garo, a dribbler, and it goes off her hands there and cleared away by the Cowgirls' defense. That was a nice play. And it'll be out of bounds to the sideline off Baylor and a throw in for Oklahoma State. That was, I believe, Rodriguez who came in from the backside. It was. Down to four minutes to go in the game. Collision, tackle, out of bounds. Cowgirls did not touch it last. They'll get a throw in right below us here. Alan Carmichael wants everybody to clear forward. Baylor has numbers though right here where the ball came in. They can't win it now. So trying to win it for the Cowgirls. Baylor with the touch up the near sideline. It stays in bounds. And it's still in bounds. The Cowgirls able to play it, but it went across the line. And this will belong to Baylor. Three and a half to go in the game. No score. Ball played to the near sideline, looking for the cross. Kinsey to the top of the 18. Cowgirls knock it away, but Baylor have numbers in the back end. Knock it into the 18. Cowgirls clear it all the way back to halfway. And Akiyurige has to go back to get it for Baylor before it goes out of bounds. This will take the clock as they'll send it back to the keeper down to three minutes to go in regulation. Again, it's a scoreless game. Now almost for sure the first team to score is going to win in regulation. Well, the Cowgirls get another opportunity. Boy, they want a handball there and nothing called again on Henderson. That's about three times here in the second half. Ball's played forward by Baylor. Cowgirls get away with a push. And now a foul on, well, it's going to go out of bounds anyway. No play there by Baylor. Off of them, and it goes to the sideline. So a Cowgirl throw in to the left of the halfway line with 2.30 to go in regulation. And a scoreless game here in Stillwater. We'll check the other Big 12 scores coming up on the post game. Play ahead to Woodard. Here she comes down the left side. She hasn't really had a good look at the ball today. Baylor plays her off the ball. She is still down but pops back up with 2.10 to go in the match in regulation. Now the Lady Bears send it the other way into open ground where Han can run it down for the Cowgirls. And now to So, and Kuba brings it across the line and plays it on offense. Looks to center it in front. Chance for Jones coming in right side. A touch. Now the cross. And a chance in front popped in the air by Baylor. Nobody can get it for the Cowgirls. Woodard runs it down. Chance top of the 18. Play there by Kumba, and a short roller comes right to the keeper. Really never had a good angle to the, to the goal square. And a punt here by one with a minute 35 left in regulation. Baylor, Baylor player down, but Tresfield might have got away with a hook there. Jones tries to send it forward, but there isn't anybody within 20 yards of the ball except the goalkeeper. So Baylor will punt it away, and they can take their time here if they want to to try to set up something in the final minute. As we're down to 1.15 to go, we will take a break if the game goes to overtime. Baylor trying to win it, can't. Nice play by Morgan, but it goes out of bounds with one minute left in regulation. Played ahead in between the defenders. Here's James, top of the 18, comes in, leaves it off on the near wing for Piercy. Should have just gone on in. She had a better angle. Maybe didn't know that. Now it's played toward the square, and a 
chance there. Played off the foot of Kinsey. Goes across the back line and a goal kick for Oklahoma State. So now with 40 seconds left in regulation, if the Cowgirls can get something here off of Hans' kick on the goal kick with 30 seconds left now, they may have one more chance. But Baylor tries to intercept. Kicks the ball high in the air to Lima. Knocked down along the sideline here. Taken by Kinsey. They may have one more chance. Piercy off the wing, trying to defend the Cowgirls. Kumbaso, a nice play. Now fouled right here in front of us with 15 seconds left is the Cowgirls' J.C. Jones. They set the ball for play, a deep kick. We're going to go to overtime. Scoreless game here as we go to the first overtime. Baylor and Oklahoma State here in Stillwater. And we'll see what happens after a timeout. We'll get you some numbers also here at the end of the first 90 minutes of play. And for the fourth straight game, Baylor goes to overtime. This time with Oklahoma State scoreless as we head for the first overtime here in Stillwater. We'll take a timeout. This is Cowgirl Soccer from Learfield. Harness the Earth's energy to heat and cool your home with Infinity Geothermal by Carrier. Reduce heating and cooling costs up to 70% with one of the most energy efficient systems available today. And get the expanded features, advanced control, and remote access of Carrier's top of the line series. Turn to your local Carrier dealer, BL Heating and Air Conditioning. Call them at 405 372 8140. That's 405 372 8140. Or find them online at BLHeatingCool.com. Can you name the university that has won the most football games? At Johnson's of Kingfisher, we have a record number of new Ram 1500s and 2500s, America's longest lasting pickups. In stock and during Ram Power Days, our low prices will win you over. Who has won the most college football games? The University of Michigan. Make that short drive to Kingfisher during Ram Power Days. It's our 90th year and still going strong at Johnson's of Kingfisher, Dodge, Chrysler, Jeep, and Ram. Same name, same family, since since 1927. Do you ever get tired waiting for your prescription to be filled? At Tiger Drug, with several pharmacists, your medicine is filled quickly and accurately. We have numerous ways to expedite your service. Call us at 372-7900 or email us at info at tigerdrug.com or you can just walk in or drive up and we'll prepare your order while you wait and we visit with you about your meds. Remember at Tiger Drug, the customer always comes first. At Stillwater Medical Center, we're asking for more. From our nurses. And our staff. We're devoting ourselves to providing unhurried and compassionate care Our mission is simple, to perfect the patient experience. It's everything you expect from a major medical center. With all the things that you love about a hometown hospital. Learn Learn more about our our mission at stillwatermedical.com. Back to the Cowgirls Soccer Complex. We'll have the first of two 10-minute overtime periods coming up in just a moment. Cowgirls were held off the scoreboard in the first half here, as was Baylor. Good defense by both teams in this second half in particular. And as resulted in both of these goalkeepers staying busy, both teams with opportunities late, unable to put the ball in the back of the net. Texas and the Sooners played to a draw today. Down in Norman. So the first tie of the season for Texas. So they are now 3-0-1 in the league and 11-0-1 overall. Texas Tech in their game was scoreless at halftime too. Let's check and see if we can get a score on that here while we have a moment. That was the only other game in the league today. Cowgirls here playing today won't be home again until the 20th when they take on Kansas State. And then Kansas three weeks from today. Both teams will come out after a five minute rest period. And we'll have the start of the second half, or the first overtime period here in just a moment. 
Tech still playing their game with TCU. And that game is still scoreless. As they're headed toward the end as well in their matchup today out in Lubbock. So we're about set to go. We're going to play at least 10 more minutes of soccer. First team to score wins. If neither team scores, we'll play a second overtime period of 10 minutes. And if neither team scores in that second overtime period after 110 minutes of total soccer, then we have a tie game. Baylor will kick off. The Cowgirls will again defend the south goal, have the wind at their back here in the second half. Baylor will defend the goal to our north, to our right, and play from right to left. Cowgirls left to right, they have the ball. Woodard, near side wing, comes in from the right side, tries to leave it behind to Morgan. Ball's blocked across the back line. If it went out before the corner, it won't. It'll be a corner kick for Oklahoma State. So immediately here in the first 20 seconds, Cowgirls will have another corner. They didn't have any in the first half and had two in the second half. It'll be Rachel Van Fossen who will take the corner. Junior out of Broken Arrow, the transfer out of Arkansas, played her high school ball at Tulsa Union. Cowgirls have five goals this year off of corner kicks. This will be to the left of the keeper. Wind blowing in toward the goal square. Approaches the ball, low line drive. Header, no, they miss it. Chance coming in from the backside by Morgan. That'll go across the back line, and it'll be a goal kick coming up for Baylor. So now Baylor will have a chance to come down and try to set their first offensive series of the overtime period. Again, you play 10 minutes, but if somebody scores first, they win. Simple as that, sudden death. Ball on the kick to the center circle. Again, the wind picking up again here out of the south at the Cowgirls' back. They will play it to the sideline. That ball run out of bounds, and Morgan will have a throw in for the Cowgirls. Charmaine gets it into Anna Beffer. Boy, a nice move around her man. Here comes Anna in open ground. Dribbles toward the top of the 18. Leaves it for Haley. Coming in from the right side. Toward the back line. Across in front. Chance there. If I can set it. So, now Beffer, and it goes over the top of the crossbar. Hits the post. But above the crossbar on the post holding up the net behind the goal square. So a goal kick again for Baylor. So there's two opportunities in the first overtime. First two times the Cowgirls have really touched the ball. Baylor has yet to get the ball past the halfway line to speak of. Strong kick by Want, their keeper again to the halfway line. A couple of headers. Cowgirls knock it down. Woodard gets it back to Leonard, who's back in. And she'll send it over to Webb on the far wing. Here come the Cowgirls on offense again. Webb brings it in, tries to center it. Instead goes to Zoller on the wing. Knocked away by Baylor. And up to the far sideline. This will be a throw in for Oklahoma State. Baylor's defensive end is to our right. They defend the right goal, north goal, to our right. With 7-18 to go in, regula- or in the uh, first overtime, rather. Scoreless game. Woodard trying to play the ball. It's intercepted by Baylor. Back to the halfway line almost. And a nice play there by Hahn to knock it away. Another chance here for the Cowgirls. Here is Beffer in front to Zoller, top of the 18. Shot there is blocked. Ends up being off a Baylor player. Zoller's able to run it down with help from Woodard. And they'll play it back and start over again. Lenhart, header at the high side of the square. Morgan, the ball headed out by her. And it's going to pass you off a Baylor player and a foul here by OSU. So a free kick for Baylor at the 18-yard line. Their keeper will likely take this play just outside the 18 with 6.35 left in the first overtime. Strong kick, but it hangs up in the wind. Header by Linhart to knock it down for the Cowgirls. Baylor looks to turn it. Henderson trying to play it in the Cowgirls zone. Played away by Van Fossen all the way down the ground. Woodard will run it down for the Cowgirls against two defenders. It'll be played out of bounds by Baylor, and the Cowgirls will have a throw in. Cowgirls were deep, so they got to bring everybody back up now, except the three defenders and the keeper. 5.58 to go in the first overtime in a scoreless game. Cowgirls with Woodard off the, in, off the throw in, rather. 
Lenhart now looks for the cross, tries to set Beffer in the square, and uh, entered by Baylor. Cowgirls keep it there. Morgan a chance in front if she can clear, but can't. And Baylor will win the ball back and play it back to the halfway line, and here they come on the attack for the first time in the overtime. They have four players, now five, down the ground. Chance in front. Here they come into the square. A blast out top by DeLima, and it goes over the top of the crossbar by a good 10 feet. Again, three goals and two assists. Assists, rather. She has nearly one-fourth of all their offense on the year. Goal kick for the Cowgirls with 5-10 to go in the game. It's all the way down to their end of the ground. Here comes Woodard on the left side. Brings it in against pressure. Looks for the chance in front, and she's just going to bring it into the square to try to kick it in herself. Not much on that one, and the keeper runs that down wide of the near post. Beffer will come down to her, and she'll pick the ball up with 4.48 to go in the first overtime. Some match if you've missed this one today here in Stillwater. Maybe the best home match of the year, despite no score. A couple of headers here. Baylor trying to keep it offensively in the Cowgirl zone. Trying to win it out of there is so. Lower played off the ball. Now Baylor on the attack. Here they come offensively. They bring it into the top of the 18. Bring it in over on the near side. A chance there and a blast and a diving play near the post on the near side. Off the shot by Kinsey by the goalkeeper, Michaela Ungaro. That'll send us below four minutes to go in the first overtime. Cowgirls came out strong. Baylor's had a couple of chances. Now here comes Aller down the center of the ground looking for the player coming in from the backside. Woodard unable to get it to her. Baylor intercepts and brings it back the other way. 3.48 to go in regulation. Here's DeLima again across the line, sends it to the far wing. They bring it down from there in traffic. Sets it up at the 18, knocked away there by the Cowgirls defensively. Baylor has numbers up on the ball, though, and so here they come ahead. Chance here in front if they can get around a player. Chance for Padgett, knocked away by the Cowgirls. All the way back to the halfway line for King. 3.20 to go in the first overtime. No score. Ball on the far wing. Baylor on offense, playing it into the center square area of the 18. That's a Wineland there, headed off and now to the side on the wing coming in. Into the 18 square again, and the Cowgirls cleared away. Now a touch. That goes into the square. A chance here for Padgett, and a line drive grabbed by Ungaro. Trying to beat her to the upper side of the right shelf, and Ungaro made a good play there on the ball. Down to 2.45 to go in the game. In regulation, in, I should say in the first overtime. Keeps growing it up. We had 90 minutes of scoreless play. Seems to be the way of the league today. Texas scoreless after two overtimes with OU today, too. And same score with Tech and TCU. They were headed to overtime as we came into our overtime. We'll have scores of the other games coming up. Everybody else was off today. Baylor turns at halfway line, brings it into the forward end to our left. Cowgirls defend the goal to our left here with 2.14 left in the first overtime. Couldn't knock down the centering pass. Cowgirls get it and clear it out. Oh, at the halfway line, plays it across to Morgan. Here come the Cowgirls. Morgan bringing it down the near side wing. Charmay trying to get between or around a defender. Does. Now looks for the cross. Gets a chance in front. Woodard with the header. And the winner. <laughs> Haley Woodard coming in from the far side with the winner off the header. The sixth. Well, actually, it's the header. It's not the sixth time they've done it off of a corner because that wasn't a corner but they get the header they get the winner and the cowgirls have won this one one nil with 153 left in the first overtime Haley Woodard with the goal that's her sixth of the year and they should give Morgan an assist on that that would be her first assist of the year and the Cowgirls with the 1-0 win with 153 left in the first overtime. The Cowgirls stay undefeated here at home. Baylor drops to 7, 3-2, and 1-2-1 one, two and one in the league. Oklahoma State now 10 wins 
That tops the number of each of the last two seasons. Nine wins each of the last two years. And more importantly, nine, or make that ten, one and two. The Cowgirls still undefeated at home. Seven and oh, and they are three and oh in the league. And right now in first place after Texas tied earlier today against Oklahoma. We'll come back with the totals after a two-minute break. This is Cowgirl Soccer from Learfield. Cowboy fans, stop by Chris's University Spirit today to sign up for the Orange and Black Spirit Club for only $40. You'll receive a membership club shirt and a 20% off card good on items for one year from purchase. All you have to do is stop in at 244 South Knobloch on Campus Corner in Stillwater before it's too late. Also visit us online at chrisuniversityspirit.com today. It happens to everyone who plays the game. We get hurt and try to walk it off, but playing hurt can make it worse. At Mercy Sports Medicine, keeping you in the game is our life's work. Schedule a free pain assessment from a Mercy Pro at mercy.net slash pain check. We'll check your injury, give you a plan for quick recovery, and get you playing again. Sign up at mercy.net slash pain check. At Mercy Sports Medicine, your life is our life's work. 